Alright, so welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be covering how to install OpenVAS or the Greenbone Security Manager so that you can do vulnerability scans from Kali Linux for free. This is to find vulnerabilities on networks. So first what we got to do is install OpenVAS. It's now called GVM. Once that's installed, I'm going to minimize this. And the reason being, I can't see it down there. OK. Type in GVM setup. And please check out my channel for other videos and different things that you can use Kali Linux for. I've had quite a bit of years of experience using it. I was using it since Backtrack 2 before it was called Kali. I mean, whenever you install new software, you want to make sure you change the default credentials on it. So please watch my videos thoroughly. I'd hate for you to miss anything that's important, like changing the default credentials and then somebody compromises your box. And if you don't have Kali installed yet, check out my Kali installation video. All right, so once you complete downloading it and installing it, you're going to be given this admin password. For this application, you don't have to worry about changing the admin password because it's going to be generated. So you're going to want to take note of this password before you get rid of it. So copy that somewhere. Let's copy that. Create a document. Create file. Paste that in there. All right, so we're good to go. Then you go back up to this top left control panel under vulnerability analysis. Click on the GVM start. It's going to ask for this pseudo password for Kali. It's your password. So enter that in. Now it says the web UI can be located here. This just failed to execute the default browser. That's fine. But you should be able to navigate here. I like the Firefox. So what I just did is usual applications, internet, Firefox. And we can paste our address in here. Now this is just letting you know because it's certificate. It's a certificate issue. You don't have to worry about this. Just click advanced. So that's okay. Accept the risk. Now we're into the Greenbone interface. The web UI, probably admin. And we'll take our password from earlier that you saved. So copy that, the generated, self-generated password that you got when you installed it. Might be a lowercase a for admin. I'm not going to save it. You could save it. So here's the first time. First time logging in. Under administration, you can go to feed status. And this will tell you how old your definitions are for your vulnerability scanner. So here it's not too old. I'm going to show you how to update this. So it's the most current definitions. And every time you're going to do a vulnerability scan, it's best to just go grab the most current definitions. You can run a script that has this run once a day and automatically update these. But then if you're doing that, your Kali Linux box has to be on all the time. So I'm just going to show you manually how to update these definitions so that when you're scanning, you have the latest definitions of vulnerabilities. All right, so we're back here. This is the outdated feeds, and I'm going to show you how to update these. It can cause a problem for some people, um, this process, so just make sure that you follow this part closely so that you get the best results and update your feeds correctly. Update them in this order and use these commands just to make sure that the process runs smoothly. And I'll have these commands inside the video description as well. You're going to have to run it under this GVM user, and the first one is this Greenbone MBT sync. So run this and you should see it. Download the different updates from the feed. And as this is running, 
on that actual green bone page it's gonna have like a status bar showing that it's running I'm gonna fast forward through some of this so that you can see it update one so now the MVT's updated now you want to move on to the next one and the next one the commands a little bit different so you do the green bone feed sync dash dash type and then do scap for that. So next on the list is the scap, and it should kick off and actually you see them start to receive the file list. And like I said, come back to this page and the green bone page, and it should start to flash again. It's checking for the synchronization of your system. Let the scap feed completely update. It'll say complete before you move on to the next one. Otherwise, it'll just give you a little bit of information and it won't actually start receiving the incremental file list. So we go back to Greenbone. Now our scat feed's good. It says current and it's not thinking. So we'll do another one and that's our cert feed. And see here, it didn't kick off. It did not work that time. So let's give it a second here. If you run into this issue, it has to do with a connection to the feed. I think that they implemented some things to make sure that they weren't getting like attacked or something. So if it does that, give it some time to think. So then kick off cert after it's completed on that other one. And we can see these two have completed. Now we can do cert. Now this one's initiating and it's actually getting the packets, so we're good. Now if we go back here, it's updating here. And now this last one, one the Greenbone Community GVMD data, that doesn't get updated as often. So if you don't have an update for that, when you run this command here, this last one, GVMD underscore data, you might not get anything back from that that's okay because they don't update this as frequently as the other feeds and it's not so much vulnerabilities you can try it twice you know but it's not updated as often so it doesn't necessarily just because it doesn't update it doesn't mean that you don't have the most up-to-date version they just don't update that feed as often and that's how you update your virus definitions so that when you do a scan you can get the newest, latest, and greatest vulnerabilities that are known. Okay, now that your vulnerability definitions are all up to date and you got the latest and greatest feeds, I'm going to show you how to do a quick scan. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video. I'm not going to go into too depth of the scans, but I'll show you how to launch a quick one and start to play around with that. Keep in mind that you want to be doing this on networks that you have permission to do these scans on. I'm just going to do my local network right now just to give you an idea how this works. You want to click on the scans tab, go to tasks, and I'll have a future video that goes more in depth of these scans but this will give you a chance to play around with it. Go to task wizard and we're going to scan the local network that I have and I'm just going to do a 0 slash 24 so that'll scan everything on the 192.168.0 network start that scan kick it off and like I said there's there's different tasks you can go into this advanced task wizard choose when you want to do it what your scan configuration is but I'll do this I just did a full and fast by default it does a full and fast and you can do credentials here I'll get into a future video that shows you real in-depth how to do these scans on a network this will help you find vulnerabilities on servers or workstations that you have on your network and I'll also do a video on web application scanning for web servers that's when you're looking at a remote site and vulnerabilities in their web servers I'm gonna fast forward this so you don't have to sit here and just watch this this is the scan that's running it's still running it's 99 percent complete I think it's been running for about 20 minutes now if I click on that I can see some information about it it was the full and fast just by default like I said very quick to run this full and fast scan. If I actually click on the report here, we can see what it found. Six medium so far, one low, 206 log. And now if we go into scans, results. 
these are some of the keywords that it found. You can, and this is that scan that just occurred. This is the results for that 192.168.0.0 slash 24. These are the different hosts that it found. And there's multiple pages here. We can sort by severity. And like I said, I'm just keeping this real brief. This is just an intro. We'll dive deeper into this in a future video. And this is your vulnerabilities associated here. Remote procedure call, services enumeration. I don't have anything high here. The highest severity I have is medium. Clear text transmission of sensitive information. 192.168.0.1. Now this is if somebody visited the HTTP site rather than the HTTPS, the 443. So let's go here and look at this real quick. It's more information than I want to give you, so I'm not going to actually go there. But I'm not going to actually go to this site because I know what that is. That's my router, and I don't want to reveal all the information about my router. But basically, when I went there, I could see that it was my router login, and that's basically saying that somebody could log into the router over HTTP, which isn't secure, right? We want to use authentication pages, we want to be encrypted so we want HTTPS whenever we're authenticating to a web page. Now it's not too much of a threat for me because I know that I'm the only one really logging into my router to change settings and I know to always check to make sure I'm over HTTPS when I'm logging in there but I could disable that probably on the router to not even allow HTTP traffic for the login page. Again more in depth than what you need to know but this is just kind of insight into how this Vulnerability scanning works. It's going to give you the detection method, how it detected it, how it's affected. This doesn't enforce the transmission of sensitive data via encrypted SSL TLS connection. It detected that it allowed a login page over HTTP. This is the impact. An attacker could use this situation to compromise or eavesdrop. This is basically a man in the middle attack they could do to steal the username and password. Here's a workaround, enforce transmission of the data to be over SSL TLS connection. That's basically saying I should enforce it to only allow that page to populate over HTTPS rather than HTTP. That's how you get started. Like I said, I'll make another video in the future more in depth for this open bot scanning and green bone security management tool in order to do scans on networks and I'll also do another video on scanning web applications and web servers for vulnerabilities like if you were trying to scan a third-party site remember make sure you have permission to scan the sites that you're scanning and the networks that you're scanning for vulnerabilities it's always good to learn more about technology and use these services in order to protect your own home network or your own business if you have a small business you can save a lot of money by doing these scans yourself. Please remember to like and subscribe if this helped you out. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or just to support the channel. I really appreciate it and thanks for watching. Have a great day.